Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Rakesfall, Vivajra, Chandraskira. This is a sci-fi, dark sci-fi kind of thing from Door.com coming out June 18th, 2024. Uh, actually, sorry, it already came out on June 18th, 2024. <laughs> I received this book on audiobook from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. Normally I review ARCs, you know, ahead of the release, but I got approved for this one quite a bit later than normal, and it took me longer to get through it than I expected, so sorry that I didn't review it, like, I don't know, a week ago. <laughs> a non-linear story following two people connected over lifetimes, Frank's Fall is a lyrical, poetic experience that requires a lot of attention while reading, and this is not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> what is it about? Some stories take more than a lifetime to tell. There are wrongs that echo through the ages, friendships that outpace the claws of death, loves that leave their mark on civilization and promises that nothing can break. This is one such story. Annalyn and Leverett meet after the war, before the peace. They found each other in a torn up nation, peering through propaganda to grasp a deeper truth. And in a demon hunted wood, another act of violence linked them and propelled their souls on a journey throughout the ages. No world can hold them, no life can bind them, and they'll never leave each other behind. But their journey will not be easy. In every lifetime, oppressors narrow the walls of possibility, shaping realities to fit to their own needs. And behind the walls of history, the witches of the Red Web swear that every throne will fall. Tracing two souls through endless lifetimes, Rake's Fall is a virtuistic exploration of what stories can be. And as Annalise and Leverett re reincarnate ever deeper into the future, they will chase the edge of human possibility in a dark science fiction epic unlike anything you've read before. Okay, so this book is definitely not for everyone. It takes a while to understand what is going on in terms of plot trajectory and even the characters. The story starts off by setting us back from the characters, almost kind of breaking the fourth wall in a way, that, to suggest the idea that these stories that we're going to be told are a medium of connectedness, that the fact that the stories are connected are the focus and not necessarily the people in the stories themselves, if that makes any sense. <laughs> because while the two characters are reincarnated or whatever it is throughout the different timelines, their personalities are not exactly the same, so it's hard to really care about them as people. This was the hardest part about the novel for me. I had trouble caring about them because they kept morphing and changing and sometimes the settings were very realistic and sometimes they were super surreal or almost fantastical. So you had to first of all orient yourself in the place and then try to figure out, because sometimes they use different names, who was Annalid, who was Leverett, what are their deal in this situation? It was just a lot of kind of mental load and if you really like that I think you'll really enjoy this. I think one of the biggest problems for me with the novel is the fact that I was listening to it on audiobook. The narrator did a fantastic job. Her voice was so clear and she put on cool accents for people and she was like it was very engaging listening to her but I think it was something I just needed to read with my eyeballs. Um, also it didn't help that often I'm listening to audiobooks and things are happening around me that require like a small bit of my attention like my children <laughs> or like you know I'll be cooking dinner and it's fine I'm listening and then my kids will be like start fighting and I'm like stop and then I miss like you know three sentences and I'm just like oh, should I go back no it's fine I'll figure it out so this is a me problem <laughs> uh yeah so I just think that that might have been one of the issues for me was just me as a reader not being as engaged as I should have been when reading it Another thing was also the blurb doesn't really tell you kind of what's happening, which is fine. It should really just be a teaser anyway. But so it took me a while to kind of understand why we kept jumping around to all these different people who seemingly had no connection to one another. But once I got it, it made sense. But it's also not something I'm particularly interested in. <laughs> now, I could be wrong, but I believe the novel is about anthroposophy, which posits there is a spiritual world accessible to human consciousness through inner development and that the spiritual world can provide insights into the nature of existence. Right? <laughs> More specifically, it mentions the acoustic records, which are like a compendium, I love that word, of all human events, thoughts, words, emotions, everything, to have ever occurred in the past, present, or in the future. They contain, apparently, the entire history and future of every soul throughout its existence that can be accessed through, and this can be accessed through spiritual means. Now, I believe the point of this book is to show this, that humans are essences or souls or whatever, are all connected through time, that, you know, we're all 
one living bolus of things that are interconnected and the past matters just as much as the future and the present, all this stuff. I think the book definitely accomplished this if that was the point of it. Unfortunately, while I think the book did what it was trying to do, this doing didn't do anything for me. <laughs> I'm about as spiritual as a broken cardboard box left out in the rain. So this sort of we're all connected stuff makes me kind of bored. I don't believe in souls or afterlives or reincarnation. So to me, the repeated idea got a bit repetitive. The different lives or whatever of Annalyn and Leverett were interesting on their own, but at times the novel felt like a collection of short stories tenuously tied together. I would have actually preferred if they were just short stories <laughs> and then had like a, a theme that connected them as opposed to trying to be like a story because I didn't really feel that they were cohesive enough to be a plot together. <laughs> yet, 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 I will say this book is beautifully, beautifully written. The language is just gorgeous. It flows and is full of beautiful metaphors and descriptions. It's not hard to visualize what's going on. It's just sometimes hard to understand why it's going on. <laughs> I think if you're someone who really loves literary sci-fi, loves a book that is at its heart something spiritual, one that feels more episodic than continuous, you will really, really enjoy this. I thought it was extremely well done. It just wasn't the book for me. And that is totally, totally fine. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much to uh, the publisher for the audiobook. <laughs> I really appreciated that. And yeah.